A Hungry Bee Story for kids about a hungry bee looking for flowers from one place to another places. One day, a hungry bee was looking for some flowers. He flew from one tree to another, but he didn't find any flowers yet. After flying for some time, he saw lily pad flowers on a small pond. But he couldn't eat these flowers because there were frogs on it. If he came closer, the frogs will eat him. So the bee flew away. Then the hungry bee found some carrion flowers. Sure, he could not eat these stinking flowers. He could be trapped inside the flowers forever. The hungry bee had to find another flowers. Not long after that, the bee found some hibiscus flowers. This time he can eat some nectars. These hibiscus nectars were sweet and delicious. Hibiscus flowers were not enough for him. So he looked for another flowers and he found sunflowers and some roses. He had a big party there. He ate many nectars of sunflowers and roses. The bee was really very hungry. Although he had eaten many nectars, he was still hungry. So he looked for another flowers. And he found some dahlias and bougainvillea flowers. After eating some nectars, he saw his sister was coming. The bee and his sister flew together. And a few moments later, they found some tulip flowers. They ate some nectars there and flew again. They flew from one garden to another garden. And shortly, they found marigolds and amethyst flowers. The bee was not interested to eat more. He already full. He just accompanied his sister. They flew again looking for another flowers. Suddenly, his sister saw corpse flowers. But the bee told her sister not to eat that flowers. So, they flew again to another garden. After eating many nectars that day, they flew home to their nest. All families were waiting for them. Froggy goes to Hawaii. Froggy goes to Hawaii. By Jonathan London. Illustrated by Frank Remkowitz. Published by Puffin Books. Copyright 2011. Froggy! called his father. What? Up and at him. Today is the day we are going on vacation. Yippee! cried Froggy. And he sang, We're going on vacation. We're going to Hawaii. We're going on vacation. We're going to Hawaii. It's time to pack, yelled his dad. So Froggy hopped out of bed and packed his toy plane. Zoom! His toy boat. Vroom! And his ukulele. Plink! Froggy! called his mother. What? Don't forget your bathing suit, dear. I know, cried Froggy. And he grabbed his backpack and flopped out to the taxi. Flop, flop, flop. Are you going to Hawaii in your pajamas? Frogalina laughed. Oops, cried Froggy. And he flopped back to his room to get dressed. Flop, flop, flop. When Froggy came back, Frogalina waved goodbye. 
and off to the airport they went. Beep! 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 At the airport, they had to wait in a long line. Froggy didn't like waiting in line. So he leapfrogged over his mom. He leapfrogged over his dad. He leapfrogged over Polly Wogalina. And fell flat on his face. Oof! Hee hee hee! Giggled Polly. And Dad said, Froggy, when you get to Hawaii, don't act like a nincompoop. When they finally got on the airplane, they flew and flew and flew. But Froggy couldn't sit still. So he flopped up to the front. Flop, flop, flop and sang to the pilot. We're going on vacation, we're going to Hawaii. Froggy, called his mom. What? Please sit down, now. And his dad warned, when you get to Hawaii, I know cried Froggy. But when they got to Hawaii, Froggy went bananas. He raced through a giant bamboo forest and had a ninja fight with a coconut tree. hi -ya! Whack! 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 Bonk! A coconut hit him on the head and knocked him down. He got so hot in the jungle, he had to dive into a nice, cool stream. And almost went over a waterfall. Help! Mom snatched him just in time. Next day, they climbed a volcano. Look! yelled Froggy. Lava! He was so excited. He almost fell in. Oops! cried Froggy, hanging onto Dad's neck like a monkey. Next day, he did a hula dance in a grass skirt. Hula, hula, hula. And even the minor birds laughed. Cock, cock, cock. And the day after that, he surfed, riding his dad's shoulders with his hands over dad's eyes. Wipe out! On their last day in Hawaii, they sailed out on the four winds. Froggy borrowed his dad's binoculars to look for sea turtles, whales, and dolphins. He got a little seasick. Blah. So he looked even greener than usual. When they dropped anchor at a coral reef, Froggy had to be the first one in. He ripped up his backpack and took out his toy plane. Zoom! His toy boat. Vroom! And his toy ukulele. Plink! Oh, no, cried Froggy. I forgot my bathing suit. Oh, Froggy, Mom sighed. So Froggy had to go snorkeling in his dolphin underwear. He pulled on his flippers. Zup! 
put on his mask and snorkel. Zook, zick! And pushed past everybody. Flop, flop, splash! He glubbed and blubbed and almost sank, then popped up, holding his dad's binoculars. Oops, spluttered Froggy, looking more red in the face than green. Oh, Froggy, said his dad, what did I tell you when you get to Hawaii? Look, Dad, giant sea turtles. Froggy tossed at his binos and took off after them. Froggy! called his dad. What? Wait for me! And he jumped in after him. Flop, flop, splash! By the time the boat picked them up, Dad was too pooped to pop. When we get back home, he groaned, I need a vacation. Me too, cried Froggy. Next time, let's go for two weeks. was sitting on a tree doing nothing all day. A small rabbit saw the crow and asked him, Can I also sit like you and do nothing all day long? Sure, why not? So the rabbit sat on the ground below the crow and rested. Sudden, a fox appeared jumped on the rabbit and ate it. Moral of the story To be sitting and doing nothing, you must be sitting very very high up. Kalu, the Thirsty Crow It was a hot summer day. Kalu the Crow was very thirsty. He flew about here and there, looking for water. He saw a pot with water. He went close to the pot. Kalu saw that there was very little water in the pot. Kalu could not reach the water. What do I do? I am very thirsty. How do I drink the water? Kalu looked around. He saw some pebbles. He had an idea.
He picked up the pebbles one by one and dropped them into the pot. As Kalu dropped the pebbles into the pot, the water came up. Kalu drank the water. He flew away happily. The Aunt and the Cricket It's summer time. The sun is hot. Let's go out to play. The weather's nice, the sky is blue. It's a beautiful day. Here's a cricket in the field. He sings and jumps and plays. He sings a song all day long. He loves the summer days. There's an ant. She's very small. She's finding food to eat. She works all summer, all day long, and never has a treat. Mrs. Ant, please stop now. Don't find food today. The summer is long and we can play. Find food another day. Mr. Cricket, I can't stop now. Winter is coming soon. You must find food or you'll be hungry from October until June. Mrs. Ant, why do it now? The summer is so long. Find your food another day. But now let's sing a song. <laughs> the ant finds food. The cricket plays. And now it is September. The wind is cold. The rain is wet and soon it is December. It's cold now, cold with snow. The ant is in her home. She's warm and happy. She has food, and she is not alone. It's cold outside. The cricket is hungry. He has no lunch or sweet. Why did I play all summer long, and now I've nothing to eat?
The ant in her house sees the cricket outside and gives him some of the food. Take that this time, but next year work hard, cricket. It's for your own good. Thank you, my friend. You saved my life. I learnt an important thing. Next summer, I'll work hard and find lots of food. Then, in the winter, we'll sing. An old blind man was sitting on a busy street corner in the rush hour, begging for money. On a cardboard sign, next to an empty tin cup, he had written, Blind, please help. No one was giving him any money. A young advertising writer walked past and saw the blind man with the sign empty cup and also saw the many people passing by completely unmoved let alone stopping to give money. The advertising writer took a thick marker pen from her pocket, turned the cardboard sheet back to front and rewrote the sign, then went on her way. Immediately, people began putting money into the tin cup. After a while, when the cup was overflowing, the blind man asked a stranger, Can you read the signboard for me? It says, said the stranger. It's a beautiful day. You can see it. I cannot. This story illustrates in a timeless way how important choice of words and languages when we want to truly connect with and move other people. The Brave Little Parrot Once a parrot lived happily in a beautiful forest. But one day, without warning, lightning flashed, thunder crashed, and a dead tree burst into flames. Sparks, carried on the rising wind, began to leap from branch to branch and tree to tree. The little parrot smelled the smoke. Fire! she cried. Run to the river! Flapping her wings, rising higher and higher, she flew toward the safety of the river's far shore. After all, she was a bird and could fly away. But as she flew, she could see that many animals were already surrounded by the flames and could not escape. Suddenly, a desperate idea, a way to save them, came to her. Darting to the river, she dipped herself in the water. Then she flew back over the now raging fire. Thick smoke coiled up, filling the sky. Walls of flame shut up, now on one side, now on the other. Pillars of fire leapt before her. Twisting and turning through a mad maze of flame, the little parrot flew bravely on. Having reached the heart of the burning forest, the little parrot shook her wings, and a few tiny drops of water that still clung to her feathers tumbled like jewels down into the flames and vanished in a hiss. Then the little parrot flew back through the flames to the river. Once more she dipped herself in the cool water and flew back over the burning forest. Once more she shook her wings, and a few drops of water tumbled like jewels into the flames. Hiss! Back and forth she flew time and again from the river to the forest, from the forest to the river. Her feathers became charred, her feet and claws were scorched, her lungs ached, her eyes burned, her mind spun dizzily. Still the little parrot flew on. The little parrot was just nearing the flames again 
when a god in the form of a great eagle with eyes like molten gold appeared at her side. Go back, little bird, said the eagle in a solemn and majestic voice. Your task is hopeless. A few drops of water can't put out a forest fire. Stop now and save yourself before it is too late. Advice I don't need. I just <coughs> need someone to help. God though I am, he exclaimed, that parrot is flying on, brave and alone, risking all to help. What a rare and marvellous thing! What a wonderful little bird! The eagle was so moved that he began to weep. Stream after stream of sparkling tears began pouring from his eyes. Wave upon wave they fell, washing down like a torrent of rain upon the fire, upon the forest, upon the animals and the little parrot herself. Where those cooling tears fell, the sparks shrank down and died. Smoke still curled up from the scorched earth, yet new life was already boldly pushing forth shoots, stems, blossoms, and leaves. Green grass sprang up from along the still glowing cinders. Where the eagle's teardrops sparkled on the little parrot's wings, new feathers now grew, red feathers, green feathers, yellow feathers too, such bright colours, such a pretty bird. The animals looked on in amazement. They were whole and well. Not one had been harmed. Up above in the clear blue sky they could see their brave friend, the little parrot, looping and soaring in delight. When all hope was gone, somehow she had saved them. Hooray! they cried. Hooray for the brave little parrot and for this sudden miraculous rain. some water and went to a pond and while trying to drink the water he realized he has completely turned blue because he had jumped into a blue dye tub kept by the washerman. The cunning jackal suddenly got an idea and started walking strangely in the forest. First he met a rabbit which asked him, Who are you? The cunning jackal said, I'm your new king sent from heaven. You are all my followers and how to follow my command. The rabbit thought it to be true and he started going behind the jackal. Next, they met the deer who asked the jackal, Who are you? The cunning jackal said, I'm your new king sent from heaven. You are all my followers and how to follow my command. The deer also started walking behind the jackal. Later, they met the bison, tiger, camel, giraffe, cobra and almost every other animal in the forest and all believed the cunning jackal and started following him. Finally, they reached the lion who was the true king and all the animals told the lion that the jackal was sent from heaven to be their king. The lion king looked at his minister, Colonel Hathi, and asked him what to do. The Colonel Hathi asked the jackal, You look very familiar, but I'm unable to place you right. But tell me, why are you blue? After asking this, Colonel Hathi made a critical inspection of the jackal going around him. The jackal felt slightly uneasy since he knew that Colonel Hathi was a very brilliant minister and a very good advisor to the king. After two rounds of inspection, Colonel Hathi said, Oh King Lion, we must first honor our guest before we call the parliament to take the decision. So let's have a feast tonight to honor our guest from heaven. That night, 
great table was laid out with the yummiest meat and drink for the feast. The table had the attendance of every representative of the jungle. Name my animal, they were there. The Lion King was at the head of the table and the cunning jackal at the other end. He was enjoying the glory and was dreaming of the most important moment of being crowned the king. The Lion King raised toast to the jackal and was about to set the drink when Colonel Hathi said, King, today we have the honor of four unique vocalists who are going to sing for us on this great occasion. And please do the honor to get them to sing for a celestial guest. The lion was surprised to see four well-dressed packs of jackals ready for the song. He said, Let's have your song. The four jackals raised their neck, pointing to the full moon, let out a celebrative howl in long and alternatively raising their howl in pairs. The cunning jackal, while being composed in the beginning, could not resist the temptation and joined the howling pack. All the animals let out a surprised grunt and the jaw fell open. The cunning jackal suddenly realized that he had been tricked into this by Colonel Hathi and was about to run. Colonel Hathi's four trusted soldiers just raised their tusk and showered some cold water over the blue jackal and all the color came down unveiling the true cunning jackal's color. Colonel Hathi said, <laughs> You may fool some people sometime, but not all the people all the time. Moral of the story, never attempt to lie to your bosses and superiors. True color will be unveiled one day and you will lose your job. Once upon a time, there lived a woodcutter. He lived with his mother. One day, he went to the forest. Today, I will chop a lot of trees and make my mother happy. But suddenly, a tiger came out. Oh no, please, don't eat me, don't eat me. I'm so hungry, you are my lunch. At that moment, the woodcutter thought of an idea. Brother, you are my brother. I am your brother? No, I am not. I am a tiger, and you are a man. remember. Let me tell you the story. Our mom gave birth to a tiger. It's you. She took care of you, but you had to go to the mountains because you were a tiger. Oh, really? Mom is always thinking about you. She misses you so much. Oh, really? Does she want to see me? Yes, she does. She loves you so much. I miss her too. <laughs> Let's go home and see mom. No, I can't. I am a beast. How is she these days? She has become sick. She wants to eat some meat, but I have no money. I'm a bad son. No, you're not. Don't worry about that. I'll get you some meat. Go home. So, the woodcutter was able to go back home safely. The next day, the woodcutter and his mom found a pig in their house. It's a pig. Oh, the tiger gave the 
to speak to us. After that, the tiger brought a pig, a deer, a rabbit, and others for his mom. One day, the woodcutter went to the mountain and saw the tiger again. My brother, how is mother? Mom became healthy after eating your meat. Thank you. I'm glad to hear that. But mom is worrying about me. Why? She wants me to get married, but I have no girlfriend. I see. Don't worry. Soon, the woodcutter found a lady in his house. The tiger brought her. Oh, the tiger brought this lady. Hey, hey, are, are you okay? Where am I? I saw a tiger. Don't worry, you are safe. Oh, you saved my life. Thank you, thank you. Soon, the lady and the woodcutter got married and lived happily together. few years, his mom passed away. The woodcutter was so sad, he buried his mom on the mountain. The tiger saw it nearby. Oh no! My mother died! Tiger cried so much. Later, the woodcutter saw three baby tigers in the mountain. Strangely, they had black ribbons on their tail. You have black ribbons on your tail. What are they for? Our father passed away a few days ago. He was so sad because our grandmother died. The tiger loved his mother so much. When his mom died, the tiger was very sad and couldn't live anymore. What a faithful tiger. Just a moment. Here you are. <laughs> 
The river, they could not cross each other and started to fight. One of them said, You give way, I reached first. The other said, You go back, I started crossing the bridge first. They locked horns with each other and both of them fell into the river. Hey look! How the monkeys are jumping and playing! They mostly imitate what they see around them. Just remember the story of the cap seller. One evening, a cap seller was coming back home after selling caps. He had a few more caps left. He sat under a tree to rest and soon fell asleep. He did not notice that there were monkeys on the top of the tree. The monkeys came down and picked the caps and went up the tree. The cap seller woke up and to his horror did not find his caps. He looked around and saw the monkeys with his caps. He threw his cap to the ground. The monkeys also threw the caps. Soon the cap seller picked his caps and went home. Sometimes the monkeys are clever too. We know what happened to the two cats with a piece of cake. There were two little cats. They were friends. Once they got a piece of cake. They quarreled about how to share the cake. The monkey saw this and decided to eat the cake. The monkey went to the cats and asked them, What is the problem? The cats told, There is only one piece of cake and we are two. The monkey told, I will share it for you and bit a piece. Yummy! It tastes very good. The cats said, But there is still only one piece. Then the monkey took another bite and repeated the same and finished the cake. Now the cats knew that monkey fooled them and told sadly, Why did we fight? We should have shared it ourselves. We are almost out of the jungle. Look, there are crows. They are clever. Do you know what a crow did when it was thirsty? Once, a crow was returning home. On the way, he felt very thirsty. He looked to the ground for some source of water. At last he saw a pot. He flew down and looked in the pot. There was little water at the bottom of the pot. He thought of some means to drink the water. He then saw some stones nearby. He picked them one by one and dropped it into the pot. As he dropped the stones, the water came up. When it reached the top, the crow drank the water happily and flew away. There is a farm nearby. Shall we go over there and have some fun? It really looks green and beautiful. There are also cows, rabbits, sheep and many other animals and birds on the farm. This is the dog that guards the farmhouse. He is very loyal. There are greedy dogs also. Do you remember what happened to the greedy dog? 
One day, a greedy dog got a large bow. He went away with it. On the way, he had to cross a river. When he looked down, he saw his reflection and thought that there was another dog with a bone in the river. So he opened his mouth to grab that bone. As soon as he opened his mouth, his bone fell into the river. Alas, he lost his bone and had nothing to eat. Look at the rabbits. They are really very cute. They are also clever. Do you know the story of how the rabbit saved other animals from the lion? The lion, the king of the forest, one day ordered the animals. One of them have to come as a meal for him each day. Then he would spare the other animals. The poor animals agreed to this. One day, it was the rabbit's turn. On his way to the lion's den, the rabbit thought of a plan to save himself and the other animals. He was late when he reached the lion. He told the lion, Your Lordship, on my way, I was stopped by another lion. He told me he was the king of the forest. He told me he wants to meet you. So do I, said the lion. The rabbit took the lion to the well and told that the other lion was inside the well. The lion looked into the well and saw its reflection and angrily jumped into the well and drowned himself. Now we will go near the pigeons. They are friendly. We all know the story of how the pigeon and the ant helped each other. An ant was walking by the riverside. When it tried to drink water from the river, it slipped into the river and was drowning. It cried for help. When a pigeon saw this, it got a leaf and dropped it for the ant. The ant climbed onto the leaf and sailed to the shore. After some time, the pigeon was taking rest on a tree. The ant was walking slowly. The ant saw a hunter aim at the pigeon. The ant ran to the hunter and bit him on the leg. The hunter lost his aim and the pigeon flew away. This is old Ramu uncle who takes care of the farmhouse. He is very honest and helpful. We also have to be very honest. Honesty is rewarded. We know how the honest woodcutter was rewarded. Once upon a time, an honest woodcutter was cutting wood at a riverside. His axe slipped and fell into the river. He felt very sad. Then a fairy appeared and asked what happened. The fairy told that she will help and went into the river and brought out a golden axe and gave it to him. Seeing the golden axe, he said, That is not my axe. Then the fairy went inside the river once again and brought out a silver axe this time. The woodcutter told, That is not my axe. Finally, the fairy brought out his axe. Seeing it, the woodcutter was very happy and told, Yes, this is my axe. Thank you. The fairy was surprised at his honesty and gave all the three axes to the woodcutter. There is a small lake. Look, there are ducks and some stalks. Shall we hear the story of the fox and the stalk? Once a fox and a stalk met in the forest. The naughty fox decided to trick the stalk. The fox invited the stalk to his home. When the stalk reached the home of the fox, he welcomed her in 
and served her soup in a flat plate. The stork with her long beak could not drink the soup. But the fox drank his share. The stork felt sad. She also invited him to her home. Now, the stork served food in a jug with a long narrow neck. The fox could not eat the food. He watched her eat. The fox realized his mistake. We can sit under the shade of this tree. Trees are very useful to us. We must grow them near our home and school. It is very pleasant. We have lots of trees around us. Do you know the story of the travelers and the tree? There were two travelers. They were walking on a hot summer noon. When they reached a tree, they sat in its shade. It had no fruits. One of them said, This tree is useless. It does not bear any fruits. And it is of no use to man. Hearing this, the tree said, You come and take shelter under me from the sun and call me good for nothing? Isn't it unfair?